This is the mop-up for May, can it be May 1st, 2023. Coming up, Howie Klein will be with us in about 90 seconds. This is the mop-up for happened? May, can it be May what, 1st, what just happened? 2023. All right, we Coming have up, to... Howie Klein. All right, we have a... Uh... In about we have a problem seconds. here. This is the mop up what for happened? May. Can it be May what, what 1st? What just happened? 2023. Uh, all right. We Coming have up, to... Howie Klein. All right. We have a, uh, in about we have a problem seconds. here. All right. Are we still live? I think we are. All right. That didn't go the way I was hoping it was going to go, but it could have been a lot worse. Okay. This is the mop. Pretend that didn't happen. This is the mop up for May 1st, 2023. I'm David Feldman. Coming up, Howie Klein. Columnist E. Jean Carroll took the stand for the third time in her rape trial against Donald Trump. When asked why she didn't report Trump to the police 30 years ago, Carroll said her generation was trained to be silent. But she's not as silent as Donald Trump, who, of course, is too chicken shit and refuses to testify. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen warned on Monday that the United States government could run out of cash by June 1st. So I guess the government finally understands how more than half this country is feeling right now. The government runs out of cash unless Republicans raise the debt ceiling, but Republicans refuse to raise the debt ceiling unless they can be guaranteed enough Americans will starve to death. It's the first Monday of May, which can only mean one thing, the Met Gala. This year's theme is who gives a rat's ass about poor people. For more on this, we are joined by Howie Klein. He is the founder and treasurer of the Blue America Pack, and he writes Down with Tyranny, which is a must read. Hello, Howie. Hey, David. It's good to have you back. It's been a while. These are the things we're going to. Yes, I've been away. I, uh, I was in Thailand on vacation. So these are the things we're going to try to get to in our limited time with you. Who owns freedom, the Democrats or the Republicans? the concept of Jubilee, cinema versus mansion, who's worse? Gretchen Whitmer, the governor of Michigan, has a sister, and she might be challenging Mondaire Jones, who might be running for Congress again, and Thailand. Let's start off with Thailand. You were in Thailand. This is the first time you were there in three years? Yes, I go to Thailand frequently. I really like it. And... Um in fact, we were coming back from Thailand when when COVID kicked in. We were on we were on a plane. Uh, we we flew through uh, Korea, and Korea was uh, was thought of as a hotbed of of COVID at the time. Although no one knew what COVID was, it wasn't even the name COVID yet. And uh, and that and I haven't basically been out of the house since then. <laughs> and then the other day, I was just sitting here, saying, you know what, I've had it. I, I'm done with all this. Uh, I'm just going to take a trip, and I bought a ticket to Thailand and went to Thailand all, just all of a sudden. And are they worried? And, do they wear masks everywhere they go? Oh my God. It is so masked up. It's amazing. It is like so comfortable. Everyone, I mean, literally everyone except the tourists are wearing masks and half the tourists are as well. But, um, it's, you know, you go on say the, uh, the elevated train and you look, to your right and you look to your left and you don't see anybody without a mask. It's really, really nice. Is it an American so, phenomenon? Because I was, I was at an autograph show helping a friend out over the weekend. It was packed. No, I mean, nobody was wearing a mask. And I thought, how can this not be a super spreader event? And these are not healthy. I don't know if you see who goes to autograph shows, but they're not the healthiest people. Is this an American phenomenon, or is it all over? Well, you say in Thailand they're masked up, except the Americans. Except the tourists. The, um, no, Europe isn't wearing masks now either. Um, so it's not just Americans. But a Asians are you know, sort of used to wearing masks, and they don't mind wearing masks, so they're all wearing masks. Uh, you know, it was, I, was on three, I was on three Japanese planes, JAL, three JALs. And they don't even let you on if you don't have a mask. I mean, everybody is masked. Obviously, the stewardesses are all masked. Everyone is masked. 
Then uh, the last flight was on American Airlines. I was the only person with a mask. No one, no one else had a mask on. What is your feeling on this? Have we beaten COVID or is Biden just spinning it? Create the illusion that we've beaten it because the federal employees no longer have mask mandates after June, right? I don't know what the federal employees are doing, but I, I think that, um, you know, I think that it's up to every people on their own. I wear a mask whenever I go out, whenever, you know, I, when I go to the grocery store, I wear a mask and I, you know, I noticed that it's only about 20% of the people in the grocery store are wearing masks. Right. I think that's, that's a mistake. But, you know, it, you know, while I was in Thailand, they discovered a new variant and there were already people dying of it. So, you know, people just want to take a chance. They didn't want to take a chance. There's nothing we can do about it at this point. Is Thailand as vaccinated as this country? No, no one is as vaccinated as this country. Well, I, I shouldn't say that. European countries are pretty vaccinated, too. But, I mean, I know that my doctor told me when I, when I told her I was going, uh, she said, uh, why don't you get another vaccine, get another booster, and, uh, and take some uh, pav- Pavlov, whatever it's called, that, uh, Pavlovox or something. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's the, not, I don't know if it's the antibody. It's some kind of, it's something you take immediately. No, it, like within a day of if getting you get it. it. Yeah. Yeah. And then you, then you get it a second time. But anyway, uh, so she gave me a, a prescription to that. And my pharmacist said, you, you have too many, uh, um, boosters already. I don't know how you got all these boosters, but now you're not getting another one. And we don't have that. We haven't had that Pavlovox uh, for uh, three months and you can't have that either. <laughs> so I just went there and, you know, was masked all the time, and I felt perfectly comfortable, and, uh, you know, there was nothing going on uh, that I could tell. Now, everything has changed drastically in Thailand, aside from everybody wearing masks. When I was in Thailand last, three years ago, they were fanatic about marijuana being illegal. I mean, they really put people in jail. If you had a joint, you could go to jail. If you had more than a joint, you could really be in trouble. Um, and now... To get tourists to come back, that last year they decided to make it legal, and suddenly there are no really, there's no, there there are regulations, but there are no regulations that anybody is following at all, and the police don't even know what the regulations are. So it's just wide open, and there is literally a pot store or two or three on every street. Wherever you look, there are pot stores. Now I don't know how long that that can go because they're mostly empty. But uh, there, you know, and when I say they're mostly empty, I mean there were no customers. But there are pot stores everywhere, and you know, people, restaurants, and other businesses that I knew from my trips there previously are now pot stores, and uh, or pot dispensaries, or whatever you want to call them. Right. The government gave away. I don't remember the number. I don't know if it was a million or thirty million. <laughs> they gave away some huge numbers of of pot plants to uh, ties, and to encourage them to start planting pot and growing pot and making it into a cash crop. So, you know, they're, they're really staking a lot on pot. And it's amazing because it was such an anti-pot place, and now it's the most pro-pot pot place I ever went to. You know, and, you know it's, it, it, Americans aren't the biggest um, tourist group there, by, not, by, not by a long shot. Uh, chi- Chinese people where you can't get pot are, are the main tourist group, followed by Russians, where you can't get pot, Australians, where I think it's illegal, those are the really big groups that, that go there, and then there, you know, then come the Americans and the Europeans. I think the Europeans even more than Americans. That's interesting. Uh, and Indians, I think. Indians, that's another giant group. And, and Arabs is another, another giant group, all, all, more than the, all more than Americans. Well, that's interesting. I never thought of other countries cracking down on marijuana the way America does. So you're saying... Russia cracks down on marijuana. China cracks down on it. There's no, you can't get it in either of those countries. Uh, I mean, a little bit in, in uh, St. Petersburg. You certainly can't get it in Moscow. But in St. Petersburg, you can because that's, you know, sort of near Europe. And, you know, there are, there are people from Scandinavia coming there all the time. It, it, St. Petersburg is like, a, is, is in some ways, it's like a very European city, not like Moscow, which is its own kind of like nightmare. But um, so, so you could get it. I mean, it'd be, it, it's still illegal and you can get in big trouble. 
but you can find it in St. Petersburg. In Moscow, I don't, perhaps you can, but not if you're a, ca- a casual tourist, you can't. It's, it's, it's very, very, very uptight in Moscow. So if you had gotten COVID, God forbid, in Thailand, where would you rather get it, in the United States or Thailand? Um, in the United States, uh, you know, I, I would want to be a home. I would want to be home if I had it. What is the I medical care like? What, what you say? I know you've spoken about Thailand doctors that you, you sang their praises last time you were there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's a it's a pretty advanced country. Um, until fairly recently, I was getting all my dental care there <laughs> because it's pretty good. And uh, you know, one of the th- one of the reasons why I went there was because a, a, there's a drug that I take that is a prescription drug that is very, very, very expensive in the United States and very, very inexpensive in Thailand, and it's made in the same factory. So there's no difference at all. Literally made in the same factory. Everything is the same about it. Same packaging and everything. And uh, I, if, if what I, I bought two years' worth, which in the United States would have been a quarter million dollars, a quarter million dollars in the U.S. In Thailand, it was $3,000. That's breathtaking. I mean, just that sink in. That's breathtaking. Okay, sunk. Yeah. Breathtaking. Wow. It is. And that, you know, and I bought it in, you know, uh, I don't know if it's the biggest pharmacy in Bangkok, but it's the pharmacy that's connected to the biggest university in Bangkok. And it's, uh, you know, so it's a really, really good pharmacy. And I walked in and I said, basically, you know, I want two, two years worth, uh, two pills a day. And they took it out, took it out and gave it to me. Just like that. I, you know, you don't even need a prescription for something like that. It's not a narcotic, so they, they'll sell it right to you. Unbelievable. This country. Yeah. Well, let's talk about the nightmare that is America. What is your reaction? I, I hate to ask you this question, but we haven't talked in a couple of weeks, Bernie endorsing Joe Biden. Biden's running for re-election, and Bernie immediately endorsed him. The Republicans, at least the Republicans, fight it out. They have enough faith in the system and their own party to, to have a family quarrel and fight it out. The Democrats are terrified right. of each other, or, mm-hmm. not, or of the left. It's a little bit different because um, Biden is is an incumbent president. So, I mean, I I think that, you know, Bernie was definitely thinking about running, but he's not going to go up against an incumbent president. And uh, neither is anyone else. I mean, I'm happy to see Marianne Williamson doing that. Um, And and that that other guy, uh, RFK Jr. Yeah. 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 Do you know much about him? uh, I remember him in the mid 2000s when he was a champion of the environment and going after George W. Bush writing great books about uh, who Bush was appointing, uh, you know, to the EPA and interior. But I guess with this anti-vax stuff, he's become unelectable, right? Well, I I would think, but do people even know about the anti-vax stuff? Is he saying that it's not true? What, no, no, he's he still, he, he's still, in fact, he did an interview with either CBS or ABC last week. They edited out his comments about COVID and the vaccine. He violated their broadcasting standards by speaking out against uh, the vaccine. Interesting. And I don't think he's ever yeah, held, I don't, I don't, ele- yeah, he's never held elective office. So he's kind of like Marion Williamson in that. Most of his positions are probably pretty good, but he doesn't know how to operate the levers of power, does he? Well, I don't know. I don't really know much about him. I, I just knew that he was an anti-vax guy, but I wasn't sure if he was, if he was being honest about that. And isn't he like also connected to a lot of crazy Republicans, like on the extreme fringes? Well, I understand. Again, I don't really know a lot. Of- well, he's uh, Steve Bannon is the one who talked him into running. So. <sighs> Good. Yeah. Uh, it's too bad because I've shaken his hand at a benefit and he's he's like an Adonis. He looks 
like his father. And you, you walk into oh, really? Yeah. I, you know, he's aged, but I'm talking about 10 years ago. You walked in to a room and you saw him and you'd say, my God, it's Bobby. And, uh, but uh, Bobby went through a change. Oh, I, I and, knew Bob Kennedy and I worked for him for a while and I really liked him. Uh, whereas uh, the son, I'd never had a good feeling about. Doesn't he have like a really weird voice? He, he was the one that used to do the radio stuff. Yeah, he has. Uh, yes, he's, he's supposedly he lost it. Anyway, it, it's too bad uh, because uh, his father was on his way to becoming a great man. People change. His father was a prick, and then in the '60s he became a great man, and we never got to never got to see it. He and, did. It it does seem that he, that his his. He changed in a very, very big way, and it seemed sincere. I was just a kid at the time, and I was, he had an elevator in, in his office, and I, operate, I was the elevator operator. Really? And uh, so he would come in with his people, and they would talk and, and as though I didn't exist, and I got to hear, hear what they, they had to say, and he seemed pretty genuine to me. Well, I think by the mid-60s, he woke up every morning and thought about the disenfranchised. He went to Appalachia. He saw the swollen bellies. I, I think after his brother died, he realized that the Vietnam War was wrong and that if you're going to go to Washington, the first thing you should think about are those less fortunate. And it amazes me that in this country, we've lost sight of that. There used to be people like Roosevelt, Lyndon Johnson, Hubert Humphrey, Walter Mondale. Eugene McCarthy. Not so much Eugene McCarthy, actually. I've read about him. He, he, he was a bit of a... He, 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 a bit of an opportunist, actually. Really? Yeah, the young kids in 68 were clean for Gene, and they, everybody viewed Bobby Kennedy as opportunistic because he came in after Eugene McCarthy. And, but when you look at their position papers, Bobby was way more liberal, way more to the left than Eugene McCarthy was. I just, I, yeah. Interesting. I don't remember it that way. Yeah, I was raised to believe that Eugene... But I was very young yes. I, I, as a kid. So what do we do? We have Biden. If we're lucky, we have Biden for six more years. I mean, th that's... What do you, what, what's the best well, case? Well, you know, as you know, I don't vote for people like Biden personally. Uh, you know, I feel, I feel really good about, uh, you know, the positions that Marianne Williamson is taking. I've known her for a long time. And, uh, you know, chances are I'll vote for her. Right. Harvey J.K., Professor Harvey J.K. is working for her. Uh, she's adopted his Economic Bill of Rights. Is he is he oh. even is he going to debate her? Is Biden going to debate her? No, sure he won't. Okay. In fact, I mean, what I'm reading, he's not even going to really be on the ballot in in New Hampshire. Right. So it means it's that'll be interesting. So we'll get to see a debate between Bobby Kennedy and Marion Williamson because he wants it to start in South Carolina. Is New Hampshire still going to be first? For the Republicans, it will be, but not, not for the Democrats. Or, I mean, I, I guess they can, or, or maybe the state is going to do it and then their votes won't count or something, I, they, or they somehow are going to be punished on some level. I, I mean, this is awful. I mean, it, it, what, they're, what they're doing is really terrible. Uh, and this is all Biden all because uh, he feels that South Carolina is easy to uh, be delivered. Right. And, and my, my guess is that after, his, after he's not president anymore, it'll go back to the way it was. Right. 554 days until the 2024 20, presidential election. A lot can happen in 554 days. Trump yeah. can, could end up in prison and... I, I don't. Well, let me just say that. Or Trump, I or what? Trump could choke, Trump could choke on a hamburger. 
Well, if people would pray hard enough, I just don't think prayer works. You know me. That's what I, But okay. God forbid Harris, God forbid, is she being marginalized by Biden? Does she have any chance of being a, a nominee without inheriting it? I think so. I mean, I think it would be very, very hard to keep keep it away from her. You know, she's she's um, a woman. She's a person of color. How do you how do you prevent that? Uh, you know, in the Democratic Party, I think it would be really, really tough. You know, I you know I live in California. I, I've never voted for her for anything she's run for in this state. I think she's just absolutely awful, and uh, you know she could wind up as as the nominee. Or but it, you know, to me, to me. Personally, you know, I don't I don't vote for these kind of people. I would never vote for Biden. I would never vote for Kamala Harris. OK, I, I wouldn't vote for anybody but uh, Bernie. He's the only person I vote for. Right. Right. Well, let's No, I'd vote for Elizabeth also. Elizabeth Warren. Uh, and uh, well, let's talk about you know what I, I was thinking about today is that I'm getting the idea that Jamie Raskin may run for the Senate. And, you know, to think about that, it's like so powerful because, you know, you know, I, I guess Bernie will run for, for re-election. I don't know for sure, but I'm, I hope he will. He seems very vigorous. Um, Cardin I know said, Elizabeth Warren. Card- for the Senate. C- Cardin announced. Cardin announced not going to run, yes. Right. But, uh, and then Jamie hasn't announced anything, but uh, I, I just got the vibe that, that he's, uh, he's thinking about doing it. And that would be amazing because, you know, Really, who who would be you know younger than Bernie and Elizabeth Warren? Is there any are, are there any great members of the Senate? Well, you know, there's Jeff Merkley, and but it was just him. And then if, to have Jamie Raskin come in, it would just be amazing, absolute for the country, It'd be amazing for the U.S. I agree, I agree. So if you, I mean, I know you don't pray, but everybody who does should pr- please pray. Well, he's already. I'm already praying for Jamie Raskin. Nader's Raider, former Nader, former Nader's Raider. Let's talk about Mondaire Jones. How good was he as a congressman, and why isn't he a congressman anymore? And do you think there's any possibility that he's going to run again? I've already asked him to come on the show. Thank you. I'm almost certain he's going to run again. Um, and he, uh, he, so he was really, he was great. So when I say he was great, it wasn't just because he had a good voting record. He did have a he had a perfect voting record. It wasn't just that. It was also because he was an activist and very outspoken and fighting the right fights and doing it well. So that, you know, that that guy is needed in Congress again. The reason he wasn't he he, he what happened was um, the head of the D Triple C, Sean Patrick Maloney, a corrupt conservative Democrat, decided that his district which was just slightly uh, blue, wasn't as good as Mondaire's district, which was much bluer. So he moved and pushed Mondaire out of his district. And then, he, and then uh, Sean Patrick Maloney lost the district. His own district, which was less blue, another Democrat ran, and he won that district. So if he had just stayed where he was, he would still be in Congress. Mondaire would have won his own district. But instead, we have a Republican now in Mondaire's district, and Mondaire, I, I believe, is going to run against that person. But as you mentioned earlier, the, some sister of the governor of, uh, of uh, Michigan, the conservative Democrat herself, I, I don't mean the governor is conservative, or she may be, uh, but the sister is a conservative Democrat. She's already like indicated that she's going to join the new Dems if she's elected. She's going to run for that seat as well. So Mondaire will have a primary and he's going to be the sister of the governor of Michigan. And what is her qualification? You must have a name, but I can't remember. I, I believe it's sister of the governor of Michigan. That's her first name. Does she have any qualification? Well, uh, she's on, if I, she's either on the library board of some small town or right. on the, uh, School board. She's on some board um, uh, of one of the like tiny towns in Westchester, and I think it's Katona, which is a, a tiny little suburb. And he, she's on the 
the he's, board of Katona. He he served for two years. He only had he was one term, right? I believe so. Yeah. yeah. So who's worse, Cinema or Mansion? Because uh, Ju Governor Justice is that his name? Justice, the governor of West Virginia. Jim Justice. Yes. He used to be. Yeah, a, he's he's going to run in West Virginia. Uh, the thing is, is that there's a lot of money that's going behind this MAGA guy uh, named Alex Mooney, who's a congressman. So I don't know if you saw the ad or not, but it's no holes barred, uh, vicious, vicious ad against Mooney, just calling him a deadbeat billionaire and just going after him full throttle, like no, no holes barred. And so I think he'll win anyway. He's very, very popular. He used to be a Democrat. He, he won the governorship as a Democrat and then, uh, then paid uh, fealty to Trump and declared he was a Republican. People like that, you know, it's all about their own ego, so it doesn't really matter anyway. But he is, uh, he, 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 polling shows that if he ran against Manchin, he would beat Manchin hands down. Manchin says that's not true. He'll, he'll win if he runs. But I think Manchin is watching very carefully. Now, if, if Jim Justice doesn't win Republican primary, then he'll he uh, then Manchin will run because Manchin would be able to beat this guy Mooney, but I I don't know that Manchin can beat um, uh, Justice. And this... but you asked me if, who's worse, if it's Cinema or Manchin. Manchin has a slightly worse voting record. They both have bad voting records, but Manchin's is worse. Cinema is a rotten person. I I don't really know um, Manchin personally. I've never met the guy let alone had a conversation with him, whereas I, I do know uh, Cinema fairly well, uh, going back to when she was in the state legislature and we served on a board together. And, and even back then, I realized she was like a horror, just an absolute horror as they come. Very, very self-serving, very vicious, very mean, uh, just a really horrible person all around. I remember so you told me that when she, yeah, and Twitter won't let you say that, right? Weren't you censored on Twitter for going after her? As a matter of fact, I was. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, champions. Yeah, of I don't. I don't know why. I guess she complained. To, I don't. I don't know. If, I don't know if she did, but someone complained, and and Twitter uh, put up a warning sign on something. And, we, I, and it wasn't even that bad. It was just like I was just promoting a story that I had written about her. Right. And and my guess, they don't tell you why they they're uh, why they kind of censor you, but I think it was because of of the cartoon. And the cartoon was done by by the artist who who does a lot of work for Blue America. For, I'm sorry for Down with Tyranny, Nancy Ohanian, a, an award winning cartoonist who was the chief cartoonist at the New York Times, also the chief cartoonist uh, for the L.A. Times, and the winner of Best American Cartoon at Political Cart Best American Political Cartoonist year after year. And she uh, they decided they would censor her her uh, her work, mm. which was an unflattering mm. picture of cinema. In any case, polling shows that cinema can't win, that she is uh, really, really hated by her constituents. She's down among Democrats very, very heavily. She's down among, among independents because she's an independent now herself. They don't believe her in her either. And she's even down among Republicans, although less so among, among Republicans. They kind of like her. But it doesn't matter because they like their own candidate more. So she's not, no one's going to vote for her. Um, and if that but we'll see what happens. I mean, I expect it will be the dirtiest campaign ever run. She's she's a filthy monster herself, and and my guess is that she will run a the most vicious campaign anyone has ever seen in the state of Arizona. That's that, that I would bet anybody that that's what's going to happen. That she will throw every kind of filth against Ruben Gallego, uh, that and and make up stories about him and just repeat them over and over again. She has unlimited money because Republican billionaires love her and they've given her just millions and millions of dollars and she'll use that money to smear uh, Ruben Gallego. That, that's that's my, um, my guess and my prediction. He's the Democrat Iraqi war veteran congressman right now. Is Schumer- A member of the Congressional Caucus as well. A member of the what? The uh, Pro Congressional Progressive Caucus. And is Chuck Schumer going to support him? Yeah. Uh, my guess is that Schumer, you know, Schumer doesn't want to offend her at this point. She can go over the Republicans. So so they'll wait till the absolute last second before the, any Democrats support Gallego. 
but I, from what I'm hearing is they're all encouraging him. They, they hate her. They really hate her. But they can't do anything about her now. If they, if they support Gallego now, she can just become a Republican. Or she could vote more frequently than she already does for the Republicans. So no one wants to, they're tiptoeing around the whole thing. No one wants to come out against her. And they won't until the very, very, very end. And what are we looking at in the Senate in 2024? More Democratic seats are under threat than Republican, right? There's only one Republican seat under threat, and there are a lot of Democratic seats that are. So my guess, tomorrow, tomorrow's first, um, uh, f- first post that down with tyranny that goes up at 6 a.m. on the West Coast, 9 a.m. on the East Coast, that is an analysis of what I see happening in, the, uh, in that election. So there are, you know, mansion seat, I would say, is lost. It, 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 you know, I, I think Jim Justice will win the primary and he'll beat Manchin or Manchin won't run. And there is no Democrat that can win in, in West Virginia other than Manchin. And against Jim Justice, no Democrat who can win it anyway. So then we have a split. Uh, so that, right. There's, the Democrats have one chance to take a Republican seat, one shot at it. And that's Missouri where Lucas Kuntz is uh, is running. That's the only shot. Against Josh the, Hawley? The, the, uh, the, sorry? Yeah, With, against Hawley. Now, did we have Lucas on? No. I would love we to. We should have, have Lucas. Yeah. Look at me. He's incredible. And, uh, you know, he, 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 again, he would be uh, of the caliber, a very different kind of guy, but of the high caliber of someone like uh, Jeff Merkley or uh, Jamie Raskin. That, that's how good he is. He, he would definitely be, if he ran, in the top five among senators in the whole Senate. He'd be incredible. So, and he could, he's the only one that has a shot to flip a red, uh, a red state. That's it. There's no, you know, the other one that people talk about are Florida and Texas. Uh, but already this guy, a very mediocre Democratic congressman named Colin Allred, declared he's going to run the, today against um, – uh, Ted Cruz, he has no chance. He, right. There's nothing there. Right. And, and Rick then, Scott uh, in Florida is people would vote for him up, again. He, he's one of the worst, isn't he? The worst? He, you know, because don't have anybody. There's not. There's, there's no. There's no one. And he's awful. But it's a terrible state, and he's a terrible candidate. And the Democrats have no one. Okay. Before you go, uh, how are you on time? Can you give me five more minutes? Yeah. I'm, I'm not good on time, but sure, let's talk some more. If you need let's, let's talk about Jubilee. What is Jubilee? It's a biblical... Yes, talk about Jubilee. That's what I wanted to talk about, so good. Yeah. You wrote about Jubilee. It goes back to Mesopotamia, you say, and it, it's in the Old Testament and the New Testament. It's a forgiving, I think, in some... In some... It's, it's, it's a forgiving of slaves and for, forgiving of debt. There are, there are other parts of it as well, but it was, you know, one of the most important things in Jesus's uh, teachings. That's how important this was. One of, you know, even the Lord's Prayer, although it doesn't say it anymore, but the Lord's Prayer was, um, you know, forgive, forgive us our debts, and they made it into forgive us our sins. Um, So the the hierarchy, uh, post-Jesus hierarchy of what became Christianity, realized right away that, you know, this is not going to work. And, uh, and they, they, you know, the Jubilee ended pretty, pretty fast. The whole idea of Jubilee ended very fast. But um, I really urge people to read that post. I put a lot of time into yes. it. I spent hours and hours and hours. And while I was writing it, I even knew people aren't, aren't going to even necessarily read it. And, you know, like a post that I might usually spend an hour on might get, you know, 10 times more people reading it than a post that I spent like six hours on, which is Jubilee. But I wanted, I wanted to get it out. I wanted to explain it. And I, I wanted to learn about it myself because that's one of the things I do when I'm writing a post is, is I do a lot of research and I learn a lot. And then I try to share it. And, and you write that modern day American Christianity is Jesus will Hello? make you. Can you hear me? Hello, David. Yeah. Can you hear me? Uh, you cut out. Can you hear yeah, me? Now I do. That you write that modern. I hear you. Okay, modern day, you write that modern day Christianity teaches you to worship Jesus so you can get rich, that you can put other people. Right, King Jesus will make you rich. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very different from 
obviously from what Jesus taught. Yeah, fantastic. And very, very different from what uh, the, you know, even back in the ancient days of those times, there were really, you know, there were rabbis that, I mean, remember, Jesus was a rabbi. So there were rabbis like Jesus, and then there were the Pharisees who were like money hungry, and they were very much like what the Hasidics are today. And, uh, you know, and, and I mean, what they would do, um, is they, cause there, there was Jubilee, uh, among the Israelis, the ancient Israelis had Jubilee. So every 50 years, um, that, that would be forgiven. But the Pharisee rabbis would, as it, as the 50 years were approaching, they would make people sign a document exempting their loan from, um, uh, from a uh, Jubilee. That's how, that's how awful they were. Mm. To be continued, read it over it down with charity, read everything over it down with Terry, Howie Klein, founder and treasurer of the blue America pack. We'll go over the candidates. Uh, next, do we have you next week? Yes, definitely. Good, good, good. And we'll go over who, who should people donate to this week? Um, well, you know what? Sunday, we have a, uh, a contest starting where we're giving away a double platinum record of Green Day's uh, Nimrod, a beautiful, beautiful piece that, you know, anyone would love hanging uh, in their home. Or if they don't like Green Day, they could give it to uh, someone who does. Right. But anyway, we're going to be giving that away uh, to, the Virgin to one of the Virginia candidates. And you know what? Maybe I should get one of the Virginia candidates to come on and we can talk about the, the importance of the uh, election in Virginia. Because it's this year. It's right. not next year. You know, every, uh, mostly everyone we talk about is running in 2024. The Virginia legislative races are all in 2023. Right. So how about that if we get somebody to come on? Yep. Uh, let's talk tomorrow. Okay. Fantastic. Thank talk you. To you tomorrow. Thank you. Follow, thank you, Howie Klein, founder, treasurer of the Blue America PAC. Follow him on Twitter while he's still using it over at Down With Tyranny. That's his handle, Down With Tyranny. Please like this. The only reason you're listening to this show right now is because somebody copied and pasted the link to an episode and shared it with you via email or social media. So please share this with your friends and please like this. It's very important that you like it. And I read all your comments. You know that I do. You know that this show is shaped by your comments. So please read uh, Down With Tyranny. And I think that covers everything. I'm David Feldman, reminding you to stay strong and protect the weak. <laughs>